All right, welcome to Superbike Rescue Network. Tonight we are back in the kitchen because it's cold in the garage. I thought I'd take a few minutes to talk about something that affects all of us. That's the issue of titles. There's plenty of bikes out there on Marketplace, Craigslist, wherever, listed as not having a title. We're going to talk about everything you need to know about buying a bike without a title tonight. So the first thing you need to know if you're considering buying a bike without a title is don't do it. It's a really bad idea. There's a couple reasons bikes don't have titles. The first one is that the bike was stolen. Another reason is the bank has the title. Somebody just stopped making payments on the bike, they're going to sell it cheap to you. The reality is the bank owns that bike. As soon as you try to register to try to get a title, the bank's going to come and get the bike and you're going to be out of your money. Same goes for a stolen bike. That means as soon as you do a police inspection on the bike, you've lost your bike, you're out the money. Another reason I've seen is if somebody gets behind on their child support, the state will actually put a lien on the title of the vehicle. Uh, you'll go to register the bike and you'll find out that you get to pay someone's back child support in order to register your bike. All these reasons are reasons you should avoid buying a bike without a title at any cost. So if you've ignored my excellent advice and found yourself owning a motorcycle with no title, I'm going to tell you what you can do to get that legally titled in your name. So the first thing you're going to hear if you ask on any internet forum is a Vermont title. Do not do this. It's a really bad idea. You're also going to see a lot of places advertising. We can get you a title for a flat fee. Just avoid these guys. Most of them are a ripoff. Everything they can do, you can do yourself at little to no cost. Well, I'll walk you through this process step by step. It's pretty straightforward. You just have to follow the instructions. What you're going to do is file for an affidavit of ownership title. State of Indiana allows you to do this for any vehicle with an NADA value of less than $5,000. First and most important step to obtaining a title is your police inspection. A lot of times the seller will tell you, oh, I've had the police inspection done. This, unless they have the document signed by a police officer, it didn't happen. It's the same as any other maintenance item they claim to have done on their bike. If they don't have receipts, it didn't happen. Call your local police department. Some prefer you take the bikes to them. Some will come to you. Just depends on the jurisdiction. This is the most nerve-wracking part of the process because if your bike comes back as stolen, uh, you have to surrender to the police at that time. And a lot of times police departments will offer to do this in advance before you lay out any cash for a bike. You can request an officer to meet you with the seller and do the inspection on site before you hand over your money. Now that you've got your your police inspection done. I hope it was successful. We can start on the tedious part of this, which is the paperwork. This is a very slow process. It's going to take you five to six weeks if you do everything right. If you make one mistake in this packet, they will send it back to you. Your five to six weeks starts over. All of this title work is done by the DMV's central office. Your local branch cannot help you. First paperwork you'll fill out is your application for certificate of a title. When you fill this out, pay very close attention because a lot of these blanks are to be filled out by the DMV only. You want to make sure that you've filled out every blank that you need to fill out. Pay close attention when you fill out your dates and your prices. I know some people think it's fun to change dates and to change prices, but this is not the time to do that. You want to make sure you are completely honest with the BMB when you apply for this type of title. The next piece of paperwork you're going to fill out is an affidavit of ownership or a vehicle. What you are doing is you're signing your life away saying you own this vehicle legally. The next document you're going to fill out and sign is your bill of sale. Now, you may say, I got a bill of sale from the seller. Unless you got this bill of sale on this form, as far as the BNB is concerned, you don't have a bill of sale. So it's very important that you use this form at the time you purchase your vehicle. The next form we're going to fill out is an odometer disclosure statement. Most likely, if you have an older bike, it's going to be exempt on the mileage. On this form, though, that doesn't work. You have to actually record the mileage or record no device. You can't not fill this out, even though your vehicle is exempt. Last page of the packet is just your financial information, your credit card information, and how you plan to pay for your title. You'll also be required to submit a copy of your driver's license. Uh, once again, take another look through the steps. Make sure you've completed every step. You can't skip any of them. If you do, I'll send your packet back with a nice courteous note telling you what you forgot and letting you start the process all over again. <laughs> Thank you.